Well, I think because scientific information is a vital piece of information to have and to consider. If you ignore it without fully explaining why you're, you're making some alternative judgment, uh, you end up with a much weaker argument. And so you end up not convincing people. Uh, and, and that just weakens your whole position. Uh, the situation with the Kyoto Protocol is a really interesting example. The Kyoto Protocol is an interna international agreement that was drafted to try and get us to reduce our carbon dioxide emissions. And it had uh, provisions for different parts of the world reducing by different amounts. Uh, and so uh, we were work there, there was a proposal to try and work toward it, to sign. There were a lot of negotiations going on about the specifics of implementing it. When this administration c came in, what it did was basically walk away from the Kyoto Protocol. In doing so, the explanation it gave was in part that the science is uncertain, so therefore we shouldn't be taking action. Developing countries are not participating, therefore this isn't a perfect agreement. Uh, and, and they didn't come up with an alternative. Well, developing countries are only putting out a small fraction of the carbon that we are. So they're only a small part of the problem. They're using the energy they have to try and survive. So, so to suggest that they should be taking on as large a role as the developed countries uh, it is just not a workable kind of thing. It sort of turns the whole philosophy of how we've worked with developing countries over many, many years. The first things they are going to do is take actions to try and survive. And then as you get richer and wealthier, then you're able to take more advanced actions. And so as an advanced country, we should have been willing to try and step forward. The president, on the other hand, said no. Our economy is growing too fast. We're, we need too much energy. Uh, basically, we have too much money for us to take this action, but we expect the poor countries to do that. Uh, for the scientific community, he basically said, no, it's all un uncertain. Even though 150 countries around the world had unanimously agreed on this, the results of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change are non not some especially green ecological document. When 150 countries unanimously agree on something, uh, there's really something there. And basically what the president did in stepping back from Kyoto was to deny both of those kinds of arguments. Now it turns out that because we'd been negotiating for Kyoto so long, it would have been very hard to implement. But the main reason it would have been hard to implement Kyoto as compared to the Europeans, which we've been pushing forward, is that the European population is essentially level. And so they can use their new investments to get rid of the least efficient energy generation things and try and improve. And they're working hard to try and do that. And so over 15, 20 years, they're gonna, they should be able to accomplish something. The U.S. population is growing at about 1% per year. Uh, so we basically have to keep everything growing and try and provide energy for all of the new people who are coming. And so what you see in the U.S. is people aren't shutting down any power plants because if you do, you're ending up with power shortages. So the real reason we couldn't do Kyoto as it was proposed was our population was growing and we waited too long to try and take that kind of action. Now, what? so that would have been an argument that could have uh, been helpful in trying to explain what the p position was, both to the Europeans and to the U.S. population. Uh, then the next issue was, to, was a statement that we really can't do anything. Well, there's a lot we can do, and the policy that was come up, that ultimately came out from the administration, was essentially a do-nothing policy. It was just sort of continue along with the same path we're on, which is a gradual improvement in the efficiency of energy use, but the emissions are still going up, so you still have the climate problem. So it was basically, I think, a, a misleading of the public about what the reasons for, for what had to be done and, f and a misleading about what could be done. So by not really focusing on the scientific and the expert information about it, but sort of trying to make it all on just sort of uh, fairness or, or 
sort of arguments that weren't well based, um, I think it greatly weakened the argument and has really hurt the discussion in this country about the challenge that we face and what actions we should take.